As the Roman Empire continued to grow, they eventually took control of most of Britain. Before then, the empire had dominated the Mediterranean Sea. They successfully stormed the ancient cities of Carthage and Macedon before taking control of Egypt and Syria. After traveling through the Alps, they eventually reached Albion, which was the original name for Britain. By the time the Romans arrived, the Iron Age settlements had advanced further, having thriving agriculture, wooden structures, and large communities. Trading routes had also been established between the Britons and the people of Gaul, who lived in what we now know today as France and Belgium. Here, wine and the first forms of currency were traded. While Julius Caesar failed to take full control over the island, he returned in the years 55 and 54 BC out of stubbornness and his interest in taking control of the trading that was going on. Caesar planned on disrupting the Belgae trade routes in the English Channel and believed that the Britons were going to help their friends across the sea as a response to the hospitality. This made the people of Britain enemies of the Roman Empire. Caesar managed to persuade the Roman Senate to support his invasion of Britain, telling them the land was rich in silver, a claim that he had no proof for. Before its discovery, Britain was hidden away and had gone undetected by the Romans. In fact, many people in the empire thought that the island of Albion was a myth, a legend that told of barbaric groups who were involved in a practice that disgusted the Romans to their core. They drank milk from animals. Caesar's plan to invade and take control of Britain didn't go down well, with the Romans having to retreat to avoid being defeated. Undeterred, he returned with five legions which allowed him to storm across the Thames River, and he managed to speak with the chieftain of the Britons, Castlevanus. This meeting resulted in a peace treaty, with Caesar returning to the mainland of Europe to deal with a rebellion breaking out and a failed harvest that threatened starvation. Caesar never returned to Britain, and after a civil war, the Republic crumbled. Under the rulership of the emperors Augustus and Caligula, who continued to grow their empire in Gaul, their eyes once again set upon the barbarians across the channel. While the interest was there, the time wasn't right, and beyond a symbolic throwing of javelins in the ocean, the invasion never came. In the year 43 AD, however, Emperor Claudius sailed across the sea with four legions, with Alus Plautius leading the charge. Reaching Richborough, located on the east coast of Kent, the invasion of Britain began. Despite only spending 16 days on the island, the glory-seeking emperor returned to Rome in the year 44 and was hailed a hero. Despite the emperor leaving, the empire continued its invasion. They swiftly took the territory of Catavolani, a Celtic tribe state, before spreading north and west. By the year 60, much of Wales was under Roman control. Roman kingdoms were created in modern-day Norfolk and other places, with the Vespasian, who would later become emperor, sending his legion to the southwest to capture tribal settlements. It was around this time that cities like Londinium, which would later be known as London, was built. While the Romans seemed like an unstoppable force, the Britons continued to resist them. A member of a Celtic tribe called Caradacus managed to persuade groups in Wales to help fight the Romans, but he was captured. He managed to escape captivity and fled to a region ruled by the ancient Britons known as the Brigantes. But the queen chose to hand him back over to the Romans as a sign of newfound loyalty. Caradacus was sent back to Rome with his family as prisoners and, surprisingly, was spared death by Claudius. Boudica, the Roman ally and wife of Prasutagus, who was the client king of the Essenae tribe, headed a revolt against the empire. After the death of her husband, half of his kingdom was to be given to the Romans, while Boudica would be left to rule the other half. Rome wasn't happy with sharing the kingdom with somebody they classed as a traitor and decided to plunder the whole thing. If they couldn't have all of it, then nobody could. Boudica retaliated by sending her army to Londinium, where towns were plundered and burnt down. 
According to the Romans, 70,000 Romans were killed as a result of the revolt. Although Boudicca and her forces were eventually defeated thanks to the expertise of Roman governor Gaius Suetonius Paulinus, Boudicca was believed to have ended her own life with poison rather than surrender to the Romans. The Romans went on to defeat the Druid stronghold at Anglesey, who were targeted for their religion that was opposed to the Empire. This decision led to the Emperor being replaced with Terpileanus, who saw a great change in the way the Romans ruled Britain. Eventually, Britons gave in to the Roman culture, and the previously plundered towns and settlements were rebuilt, including London, which became the capital of the Romans living in Britain. Taxes were introduced, mining techniques were improved, livestock and grain production was increased tenfold, and the trade industry flourished, including that of slaves. It was during this time that roads were established throughout the country that connected key locations, such as London, York, and the Welsh border. This innovation built valuable trade networks and increased the affluence of the capital. The Romans were not yet done when it came to controlling, however, as they later moved into northern Wales, as well as sailing over to invade Ireland. The Romans further implemented their culture in Britain, building amphitheaters, Roman baths, and teaching Latin to its inhabitants. By the year 130, formidable military garrisons were built throughout the continent and other territories ruled by groups the Romans considered barbarians, such as the Balkans, were encouraged to aid in the Roman expansion. Britain was eventually split in half, which was called Britannia Superior and Britannia Inferior in order to rule more efficiently. The problem for the Romans was that the more they spread out, the more attention they got from other enemies. The island saw a barrage of attacks from the Picts of Scotland, the Scots of Ireland, and the Saxons who traveled from Germany. For a period, a successful rebellion led to the kingdom separating from Rome, although it was recaptured in the year 296. By the end of the 4th century, and with the emergence of Christianity on the continent, the Romans slowly lost control of Europe. The lack of food resources such as grain spelled the end of the Roman Empire. As the last emperors withdrew, British cities were given the message that the citizens now had to fend for themselves, as the empire finally fell. This is where local governments were created, overthrowing the Roman magistrates that had governed more centuries. Despite Britain no longer being a part of Rome, their culture continued and shaped the country we see around us today. In the decades that followed, heretics battled Christians. Saxons from Ireland and Scotland raided English coastal cities, and Europe began to fall in what was known as the Dark Ages. Britain broke into smaller kingdoms, and a phase of regression began. While Britain saw some truly formidable enemies, their most challenging foe was one they didn't see coming.